Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the June 13th, 2018 meeting of the Chappaqua Central School District Board of Education. Uh, the board has been in executive session discussing issues of negotiations and personnel issues. And I'd like to ask for a motion to reconvene the public session. I move. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, it's nice to see a very large crowd of people tonight. It's a very special uh, occasion where we will be honoring our retirees. And uh, so without further ado, I will hand the floor over to our superintendent. Oh, okay. Um, so tonight we begin by acknowledging our retirees who've worked in our district for so many years, supporting our students in their various roles and capacities throughout our district. And I'm so pleased to invite our principals and our directors to share a few comments tonight about all of these individuals who took time out of their schedules to be here. On behalf of the district, let me begin by personally thanking you for all of your service and commitment to our community. So we'd like to begin with honoring John Alexander from Seven Bridges. So Andrew, if you could come up with John, that would be great. You have to stand up here. And I think jo John, did I hear you right? Your last day is actually tomorrow? This is, this is, this is great. Good. Congratulations to you. So. Come on up to the mic. All right, where would you like John to stand? <laughs> right next to you. Right next to you, okay, yes. fantastic. <laughs> Hang on a sec, I have some remarks. So, um, so it's my honor to recognize John Alexander for 30 years of service as a custodian in the Chappaqua Central School District. John, he started at Bell in 1988, where he worked for the first 21 years in Chappaqua after taking over for another custodian who had also spent 30 years in Chappaqua, which I think is pretty amazing. John began on split shift, which allowed him to work in the cafeteria during the day with students before taking on the task of cleaning every single bathroom in the school, starting at 3 o'clock. Right there, there's a big thank you there. That's just amazing. I thought I can't believe that. After, after first five years, John moved to Knights, um, taking care of the science wink, and he's worked nights ever since. And at Bell, John used to play basketball with the students on what was the annual Valentine's Day game, reminding him of his days on the rival Fox Lane basketball team, which we won't mention here in Chapel, but it's true. I don't know if you told the kids that. He then spent another four years at Roaring Brook taking care of third grade classrooms, and now he's ending his career at Seven Bridges, where he supports the physical education department, the music department, and our family consumer science classes. And so 30 years is a long time, long enough to raise a family, John's son is now 31, and it's long enough to become part of a family of colleagues here. So a couple of words from some of your colleagues at Seven Bridges. So from Stan Serafin, our chorus teacher. John has always been a kind, friendly, and gentle presence whose work I have always appreciated along with our many conversations. From Chrissy Catapano, PE teacher. For the past few years, I've brought my kids to school for various reasons, and John always likes to chat and spend some time with them. He asks about them throughout the year, even though he doesn't have to. From Nora Harnett, our family and consumer science teacher and Kim Meter, orchestra teacher, has been considerate in asking about how others are doing and making sure that the learning spaces are kept in pristine condition for teachers and students alike. He even helps out with the excess loads of laundry in the evening that are backed up from the <laughs> fax classes. Um, we've also shared several recipes and cooking techniques, and hopefully in his retirement, he will have plenty of time to develop his culinary skills. So John, you are kind and generous with your spirit. You're always quick with a smile and calm under pressure. We have the best looking school in the district and it's because of your tireless efforts that we're able to open each morning the way we do. Sometimes you have to set up chorus risers for a concert after a play rehearsal and before cleaning the performing arts center and preparing the gym. Often evening basketball leagues will follow basketball practice before you can even begin to get us ready for the next day. And sometimes you have to direct traffic for evening event, pitch in for an absent coworker and your work is largely unseen. It happens after school, in the evening, when no one is looking, when you have to hold yourself to the highest standard of excellence. So I have a couple of gifts. I know it's not protocol, I'm breaking protocol, but we don't have much time left with John because it's his last day tomorrow. So when Brady Kittredge, our PE teacher, learned that you were about to leave us, he called me down, he said, I have something for John. He said, he said John has been talking to me about these buttons I have in my office. 
Do you know what I'm talking about? These buttons. And I want him to have one. And we had three to choose from. And we thought for retirement it had to be the feel good button here. So it's. I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so John, that's it, that's that this is and and <laughs> that was that was good. Uh, and from our PTA, uh, some mementos to 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 remind you that you are Seven Bridges Falcon always. Here you go. There's a there's a mug in a in a cooler bag. So I wish you many years of health and happiness with your extended family. So on behalf of Seven Bridges and on behalf of the Chappaqua Central School District, thank you. Okay, we're gonna miss you. Congratulations. Thank you. Heidi to come up and introduce Mary. If Mary could come up too, that would be great. So I have the honor of saying a few words about Mary Crew, who's been an occupational therapist in our school district since 1998. Mary came to Chappaqua with a variety of experiences from a number of different states and countries, including North Dakota, South Dakota, Oregon, Washington, Germany, and Belgium. And then she landed in New York. And in New York, in the mid-90s, she worked for a special education preschool before becoming employed by Putnam Northern Westchester BOCES and then our school district. <coughs> Excuse me. When one speaks of Mary, one always speaks of her genuine love, care, and concern for children. Mary is always thinking how to best serve the students to meet their specific needs. She's always willing to observe students in classrooms and then offer suggestions to her colleagues regarding how they can make modifications and adaptations to support the students. She readily shares ideas, supplies, and equipment with teachers so that they can use them in their classrooms to help the students. Mary has a calm demeanor and is not an alarmist, which is good in our department. She thinks developmentally and systematically about students and how to best support them. Above all else, Mary knows how to make hard work fun for the students and will turn something that is really difficult for them into an enjoyable task. Mary, you've spent many years supporting our students who have needed your specialized skills. You have earned a well-deserved rest from the demands of your position. We know you are looking forward to your retirement, but we also know that it's hard for you to leave, as evidenced by your request to be a substitute in our district. So while we know that you'll be embarking on adventures and enjoying life in retirement, we also know that we will see you again. So on behalf of the district and all the children you've served, we wish you the very best in your retirement and look forward to seeing you next year, as we know we will. Thank you, Mary. Um, uh, Martin, if you can come up and introduce Anita Jones, that would be great. Anita, if you could come up. <laughs> Hi, Anita. Um, so for the audience, Martin Fitzgerald, I'm the principal over at Bell, and uh, so happy to be here this evening to recognize two heavyweight retirees from Bell, uh, Anita Jones, teacher of Spanish, and later on Trish Wolf, teacher of English. And I think uh, FDR um, advises on occasions like this, he says, do three things. Uh, be sincere, um, be brief, and be seated. Mm. And after <laughs> the course, who were just here, I'll be happy to be seated, uh, easy to be sincere, um, challenging to be brief. So Anita joined us uh, about mid-90s. I guess Bill was still in office at the time, our resident. Um, and prior to coming here, she had worked at St. Lawrence O'Toole, a Catholic school, and in Brewster. And she'd done a little time in Nanuet. I think I saw that too. You can just keep nodding in case I'm, I'm in <laughs> on that. Yes. But the majority of Anita's years were here in Chappaqua, where she settled in uh, to teach Spanish to young adolescents. But Anita had a couple of different roles at Bell. Uh, she was our department chair. Uh, during a time when we were pushing for more student independence, Anita was a big lead on that. She also helped us develop our transition program and showed up on a number of evenings and made it a much more robust experience for the folks coming in with regards to our language program. Um, you may not know, but there was a period when Anita taught health 
a bell? <laughs> yes. And it was one section uh, for a very short time, and it was, uh, they got a great, you know, health slash Spanish. Mm. Eighth grade health. Never complained. Didn't curse the fates. It was, thank you, Anita. But <laughs> the best years were teaching Spanish. And so, you know, it's customary to take a look in the file and see, you know, what's here. So I took a few notes, and I might read those. I just need my glasses. And here was one from a parent, dear Anita. Oh no, this wasn't the parent, this was an administrator. By stepping up, you were able to make a fine transition for our students, making their lives manageable. During your, due to your assistance, we were able to not only get through the semester, but to do so without sacrificing any curricular needs. You've displayed flexibility, growth, networking skills, and it is admirable. You've got that. This administrator failed to say that in this particular <laughs> note. <laughs> oh my goodness. I need to go back to the file. Um, this was from a parent. Dear Miss Jones, your phone call this afternoon meant the world to us. Your attention, open mind, and efforts are the base in Jay's improvement. The school is very fortunate to have you on their staff. And finally, this was to my predecessor, dear Dr. Mitchell. I am writing to express my admiration for one of your teachers, Miss Anita Jones. And then I, I just got cut to the chase. Mrs. Jones is always well prepared. I've heard comments from Jane, our daughter, that the moment in class is used well, a wide range of activities, and that projects are both creative, effective, and uh, she always presents new learning material. We feel very fortunate. <clears throat> so to conclude, um, my brother is retired, and he spends some of his year in Spain. And the nexus is not only because he's retired, is that he will sign off on emails, I'm taking a risk here tonight now, via Candios. So um, I didn't realize that Mary Ford and Les Paul had written a song called Via Candios <laughs> back in the 60s, I then. guess. So I thought we'd do just the first few lines. I'll do my best with it, Anita. But I've heard Anita sing in class, so I don't mind. Oh. It goes like this. Now the hacienda is dark, the town is sleeping. Now the time has come to part, the time for weeping. Vaya con Dios, Anita. Vaya con Dios, Miss Jones. Thank you so much. Oh Anita. my goodness! Here. Uh, we need oh, wait, David is here, so put that pin in, pan in. Oh, that is so nice. I mean, this beautiful, beautiful picture. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Martin, we didn't know you could sing. Yeah. This was, this and now you know for sure. <laughs> I mean, whew. so Trish Wolf, if you could come up next, because that would be great. Hi, Trish. Um, so a number of parallels between Trish and Anita. Um, and Trish arrived around the beginning of the 21st century. It sounds like a long time, right? But around 2001. And prior to that, Trish also worked in a Catholic school in White Plains. Our Lady of the Sorrows, or the Little Sorrows, or something, I was trying to figure that out. <laughs> uh, the Sorrows. Um, and he, uh, Trish lives over in Armand, so she also helped out a lot over in uh, Byron Hills. But um, around 2001, uh, Trish came and settled in Chappaqua, where she uh, nested in beautifully to work with the kids. Also like Anita, Trish was a department chair. And during her time, helped us a lot with some of the teacher college work, uh, the workshop model, and the classroom libraries. Like Anita, Trish also took one for the team, literally, when she played against the Chappaqua Challengers and unfortunately sustained an injury and was a career-ending injury. Um, and we'll never know. We'll never know. Oh. And, you can, and look, what can I say? Uh, showed, up, showed up to work yesterday morning. So. Um, and of course, like Anita, Trish spent her best years working with young adolescents and teaching English. Um, 
couple of couple of things in Trish's file which kind of captures, I think, the essence of Trish. Because if you get to know Trish, she's got a wicked sense of humor, um, and often comes to work singing. So just her family, she comes singing to work. Um, <laughs> And so I thought these were interesting, and I think they reflect perhaps the fact that Trish. I'm so happy to meet that. I think it. I think it captures some of this. So here's one, and I was trying to figure out as an English teacher this one, but I thought this was interesting. This was uh, uh, Mrs. Wolf. Alex had a fantastic year. I know. I'm his father, and thoroughly enjoyed your class. So I'm not sure if the father thoroughly enjoyed the class, but uh, that was one. Here's another. Dear Miss Wolf, you are the best. I think your suggestions are terrific, and I'll go over them with David. By the way, if all goes well, our Havanese puppy will be born in late April. So, another was, <laughs> thank you for your encouragement and confidence in Matt. He promises to keep his end of the bargain, and he'll have me looking over his shoulder. And then lastly, to Mrs. Wolf, we asked Joshua to spell teacher. He spelled Mrs. Wolf. Aww. We asked Joshua to look up the meaning of the word teacher in the English dictionary. He said Mrs. Wolf. Yes. So no more singing. <laughs> Having said that, uh, back to my brother. Because the second half of the year is spent back in Ireland, which isn't as sunny and bright, a little rainy, but is magical. <laughs> And Trish, I know her roots, so for Trish, we have a small little Irish blessing to wish her well. And it goes like this. Trish, may you always have work for your hands to do. May your pockets hold always a coin or two. May the sun shine bright on your window pane. May a rainbow be certain to follow each rain. May the hand of a friend always be near you. And may God fill your heart with gladness to cheer you. Thanks so much, Trish. Congratulations. Congratulations, Trish. Congratulations. And um, Jamie. And Heidi, if you could please come up. Where is she? Hedy. Oh, Hedy, I'm sorry. She goes now, but she's retiring. <laughs> So I don't have gifts, and I promise not to sing, but that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate every day that you have given to the students of Graflin. Hetty joined Graflin as a teaching assistant in the Literacy and Learning Department in 2005, and later she became a teaching assistant in the Special Ed Department. Hetty works collaboratively with teachers to pro provide support and instruction to her students. She enjoys working with small groups and can be flexible in including other students in the class whenever that's appropriate. Hetty sets high but reasonable expectations for all her students and motivates them to do well by giving them positive feedback and guidance on ways to improve their skills, study habits, and behavior. Hetty has worked hard to become knowledgeable about the units of study for reading and writing so that she can provide instructional support to students with minimal direction from the classroom teacher. She performs all of her assigned duties in a quiet and professional manner. Hetty looks forward to the quieter days of retirement where she can spend time with her family, but she has promised that she will come and work as a substitute but only when she feels like it. <laughs> Hetty, we will truly miss having you around, and we are so appreciation for all that you have done for the children of Graflin. We wish you good luck and wish you well. Adelino. Now, if anybody should sing tonight, it's Adelino. Because if he were working right now at Graflin, he'd be singing. <laughs> right? So Adelino started in the district as a cleaner at Graflin in 2003, and he's been with us ever since. Adelino is a relaxed, easygoing, friendly, behind-the-scenes guy but there are always clues indicating that he's around. First, you will hear him singing. 
During after hours, Adelino's songs fill the school as he is doing his work. Another way to know that Adelino is around is all you have to do is look at our bathrooms, our classrooms, and our hallways. And Andrew made a comment about a thank you about the cleaning that his cleaner did. Adelino cleans first grade boys' bathrooms. <laughs> that is an enormous thank you. <laughs> they are spotless every morning when the kids arrive. He works really hard. He will do anything that anybody asks him. You could see him directing traffic, which on our campus is a challenge as well, almost as challenging as cleaning first grade bathrooms. And um, he happily does his work. In his free time, Adelino enjoys being home with his family. He has two daughters and a son. But what's most interesting, three daughters. Oh, I got misinformation. Thank you. So you're busier than I thought. You're going to be busier than I thought. But in addition to those three daughters and son, he has chickens and rabbits and gardens and, and um, grows vegetables. From what I understand, he is self-sustainable, right? So Adelino is going to be busy. He's not going to be looking for things to do. But Adelino, we appreciate everything you've done for our school and for our children. We wish you lots of good luck and know that we expect you back for summer barbecues. Yes. Well, only when you want to. <laughs> only when you want to. Congratulations. I just want to thank all of our administrators and our retirees who were able to make it tonight so we could celebrate your tremendous accomplishment for our district. And I know at this time we'd like to acknowledge one of our board members. Oh, okay, yes, already. So, oh, bitter, bittersweet, Allison. You know, I, I jotted down a few things so I wouldn't forget. Because, you know, it gets a little emotional. Um, Allison, um, I have to say the first thing when I first met you, the first thing I noticed was your smile and your laugh. And I know we've talked about this before, but you had this infectious laugh. I didn't know what you were laughing about, but I remember <laughs> there was a bit about Jeffrey. I didn't know what it was, but I started laughing, and I, so I must have seemed really crazy to you. But, <laughs> but um, you do have this infectious laugh that I will miss while on the board, but I know I won't miss it completely because we'll keep in touch. Um, I want to thank you very much on behalf of the district for your nine years of very dedicated service to our whole school community. And I know your first priority was always to do what's right for the kids. We get a lot of information, a lot of options to consider. There are a lot of factors flying around, but I know that your first thought has always been, and you've always said, how is this going to affect the almost 4,000 children? in our school district. And that's always been kind of a, a mantra of yours. Um, so, you and you always balance their needs with being a very good fiduciary for the district and for our taxpayers as well. Um, you've always approached all matters, large and small, with a quick wit and very incisive grasp of important issues, and you've always had really creative solutions. Um, and you always manage to put things into perspective during good times and bad, and you've never lost your sense of humor. Um, and I think we will really miss your very witty, witty analysis of all situations. Um, and I'll particularly miss your humorous rants about arcane rules and laws that bind us, especially state ed laws that are the definition of insanity. So I will miss those uh, small speeches of yours. Um, yes. So another mantra here is that being on, the, on any school board, really, can be a thankless job only if you're looking for thanks. But uh, at this point, I want to thank you for your selfless service and all the time and energy and the thousands of hours you volunteered to this district. And the hours spent are just not at these meetings or at committee meetings, but it's really, you know, even when you're back home, just thinking about a very daunting responsibility that we have in, um, making sure that the 4,000 students we have here are well-educated and well-cared for, and that our staff is, um, has all that it needs to, 
to do their jobs well. So I uh, want to wish you the very best in your board retirement on the facilities committee, where all, <laughs> all board members go to retire. <laughs> so uh, bring your sunglasses and beach towels. Those fluorescent lights in the basement are, are fierce. <laughs> Is this a requirement? And, uh, and there's not much air, so you'll probably need the towel. Um, so Allison, you will be on my speed dial. And as we always say, you can check out anytime you like, but you can never really, <laughs> really leave. So um, you will be very, very, very missed. So I will uh, let uh, my fellow board members and, uh, and Christine as well say a few words. Uh, as this is my 11th year in the board, um, I have the, had the honor, privilege, and pleasure to serve with Allison for the past nine years. I, I'm going to read my speech, and I want to go and thank her. But first, I want to thank her two kids for letting us have Allison for nine of those years. <laughs> don't worry, we will make sure to embarrass you at some point and bring you up. And, so don't worry. Um, I want to thank her for her service to the community, her service to the district, and for her friendship. Well, nine years sounds like a long time, and it's 72 dog years, but it, it sure has flown by. Sure, there have been some downs, but it's been mostly ups. It has always unfailingly been about the students. I can say without hesitation or reservation that never has Allison wavered from her support for what is best for the students. The only agenda she ever had was what was best for the district. She pushed that agenda with dignity and passion. She has always stood up for what is right. While this is not a wake, nor am I writing an obituary, this is a celebration. I am writing a tribute, a tribute to a really, really good person. It is with much sadness that I say goodbye to my friend, Allison Glenn. Okay, so um, first, I'd like to thank you for your incredible nine years of service to our community, to our district, to the children of our district, and as an alumna of Greeley, uh, thank you, Jeffrey, um, you've given back to our community many, many fold. Um, you know, when we join the board, many of us know the people on the board, but we don't really know them. We know who they are because we're interested in education. That's why we joined the school board. And um, after you get on the board, we, me, we get to know each other. So um, when I started the board five years ago, I don't have as 11 like Jeffrey does, but uh, five years ago, you reached out to me whenever I, whenever I had questions, you would answer them. Um, you became a mentor to me, and I thank you for your counsel and advice. Um, I do have something that Vicki sort of said. Um, you know, when we're on the board, we all have different issues that we champion. And all you have to do is bring up one topic, and Allison and I will take over the meeting, and we will, <laughs> you, you hear our passion. Well, I will carry on, you know, our issue okay, of not letting New York State continue to treat our district and the other districts of New York State um, and mislead us with the funds they promise us and never deliver. So I promise you I will continue that quest. You know, I think I'm chasing, you know, uh, windmill sometimes, but it works. So I thank you again for your service. It's been a pleasure to serve with you. Um, I wish you the best in the future. And as I said before, when we come on, we don't really know each other, but we spend a lot, as Vicki said, many, many hours working with each other. So I will miss working with my friend. Um, I just wanted to recognize Allison's service to the board and thank her for a number of things. Um, being the new member this year, I wanted to thank her for being extremely welcoming to me as, as the newbie on the block and for always being available for explanations, clarifications on minutia, and to answer all questions, great and small, um, for never making it seem like it was a Herculean effort to balance her job as a mom, a working parent, and a Board of Ed member, although I know at times it was extremely challenging, but you would not know it. And I wanted to thank you for devoting nine years to this board and taking your job and your service to this community very, very seriously and doing a very, very good job for all of us out here. So here's wishing you a very relaxing summer because you absolutely <laughs> deserve it. So yeah, wishing guy's... you the best. <laughs> relaxing. Be nice to her. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, I would uh, just like to share how incredibly appreciative I've been of all your support since I came here. 
and even before I came here, when I accepted the position last year, um, you've helped me transition both professionally and personally into our exceptional community, uh, which at times has proven to be a little challenging. Um, but your advice to me is always sound, grounded in what's right for our students with the backdrop of a complete understanding of our community, both as an alumni and as a resident with students who go to school here. And I share that without hesitation that we are a better district and I'm a better superintendent because of you. And I wish you all the best moving forward and I trust we will continue the dialogue together to continuously advance and evolve our district for the better. So I thank you so much um, for bringing me here and for being able to work with you. So thank you. So Allison, we have a couple of gifts for you. We have, well, we have a certificate of recognition from the Westchester Putnam School Boards Association. This is, um, is honored to recognize Allison Gardner, whose support of public education, commitment to educational excellence, and dedicated leadership, ha leadership have enhanced the quality of education for all students in the district. And it is signed by Lisa Davis and me as an officer. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of nice. And uh, we got you um, a little plaque here in appreciation of your, oh, of you. your service. So we have this for you in a nice box. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so we'll, pa we'll pass that along. Yeah? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right the oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was going to say, last time I get to, to use this platform. Um, first, I just want to thank both past and present board members and administrators. Um, having the opportunity to work with everyone um, is truly, truly a blessing. Um, the work that you do that can, continues to benefit our children, and I've learned from each one of you um, in ways that I just cannot properly explain. I want to thank the community for supporting public education, approving the bond to ensure that we stay current and forward thinking. We cannot sit still while the world changes and just keep doing things as we have in the past. Our children deserve a district that challenges itself to learn and grow, to show them by our example. We tear down walls, we foster collaboration, we innovate together, we pull from one another's strengths to solve a problem and come up with solutions that we could never have done on our own. It's very easy for people to look at education and not realize that it's a data and research driven science. It's not just a scientific discipline, but like all true sciences, there's a balance between art, creativity, and innovation. And that balance of compassion, empathy, and science is what's truly needed and what we do best here in Chappaqua. I think it's one of the oddities of this job is that the things that are happening in classrooms today, the things my kids come home and tell me about, are things that we talked about at board meetings nine years ago. There's so much planning and research and time spent on professional development and training before anything happens in a classroom. I've said this many, many times before, but being well-educated doesn't mean that you're an educator. Just because you went to grad school or learned things differently and have a high-powered job, doesn't mean you know what it's like to be in a classroom day in and day out trying to help each student achieve to the best of their ability. Just because I've been to the opera doesn't make me an opera singer. There are new ways of teaching that are based on rigorous research and neuroscience on how kids think and learn, and we want to continue this good work as we have the talent and the vision to do so. Public education isn't easy. There are challenges and rules and limitations that are set for us, not by us. And we can only move forward with our vision if we stay focused on what's truly important, our children and their education. There aren't many, maybe any, perks to being on the board. And when I first got on, Janet Benton said to me this was an impossible role because you're dealing with two lightning rod issues, people's children and people's money. She was right. But in our role, we have to think about everyone's children, not just our own. And that perspective, that understanding that I had 4,000 children was an awesome responsibility. I've enjoyed that responsibility, and I thank you all very much for that opportunity. <laughs> Allison's uh, son and daughter are here. Two of the three. It's so mm -hmm. nice to see you. So here they are. <laughs> they take the cookies and not <laughs> <laughs> So 
so I was thinking that at this time it might make sense to take a five minute break okay. so then all of our guests who came tonight who were honored um, this evening could head home with their families and then we can continue our business with the exception of Allison. So again, I want to uh, thank all of our retirees who were able to make it here tonight. Congratulate you and your families. Um, we wish you well on your next journey, but you always have a home back here in Chappaqua, so please come back and visit frequently. Um, congratulations. So we'll take a five minute break. Okay, everyone, we're back. We're back in session. We're going to start up again. Okay, uh, so oh, at this time, we're going to we're going to move to the superintendent's report. Okay, so um, we have two appointments that I would like to move up for tonight. Uh, first, we have uh, Jennifer Burnett here. She's our leave replacement at Seven Bridges for math. So we can give a wave. She's back there next to Andrew. So we'd just like to welcome her to the district. And then I'd like to invite Jim Skoog up because we'll be appointing an administrator tonight. Um, Alyssa, who's here, so I'd like Jim to make a couple comments. Thank you, Christine. Oh, there, oh, there we, we go. go. Thank you, uh, Christine, board members, board of education. Uh, hiring is one of the most important, if not the most important thing we do as administrators, uh, from teachers to administrators to custodians, clerical staff, teacher aides, and teaching assistants. Uh, it's extremely important. Uh, for our students to find the best possible candidates and educators for our students. So this year, uh, Annie Pikarski informed us that she was leaving, and we were very saddened uh, as a school and me personally. But that gave us an opportunity to find a replacement for, for Annie, and uh, we engaged in a very extensive search process, as we would for, uh, for any other candidate, and we really didn't have to look far. So within the walls of West Orchard School, uh, through an extensive search process, uh, Ms. Alyssa Stover uh, rose to the top in terms of being a finalist for this position. And it's, it is interesting that Alyssa and I started at West Orchard at the same time 11 years ago. She as a teacher and I as a principal. Uh, and we've been working together very well ever since. She is a true teacher leader. Uh, constantly improving her practice and, in, and involving herself in professional development opportunities in the district. Jim, can I just stop you? Alyssa, can you come up so everyone can see Sorry, you? Sorry, Alyssa. I'm looking back and So forth you can here. look right <laughs> at her, right next to you. It's great. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, Alyssa was a candidate for the Future School Leadership Academy. This is a, a, co a consortium we have with BOCES and Bank Street College. And um, it's really a training program and extensive internship for becoming a school administrator. And during her internship, I had to go to BOCES to work with her professors and, and um, have a study group and talk about Alyssa. And in my conversations with the professors, she really, uh, they really said astounding things. Uh, and she really emerged as being the top member of that, of that cohort. Uh, she is a true advocate for students, has strong curriculum, uh, and instructional knowledge, and uh, very much look forward to having her as our new assistant principal. Congratulations. Hey, welcome. Congratulations, Alyssa. So I, I, already, I already apologized to Nick, her husband, uh, for encumbering yet more of her time uh, <laughs> as our assistant principal, and little Blair is, uh, is their daughter, so. Uh, welcome. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Alyssa. So I'm, I'm wondering if the board would consider uh, moving uh, 4.1 instructional as amended right yes. now? Yes, um, I think we would be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. I okay. move we accept the superintendent's recommendation to move. She through. has to make the recommendation. Yeah, I thought she just did. <laughs> I'm recommending it, yes. She asked. <laughs> <laughs> asked if I'm she not, could. <laughs> I move on 4.1. As amended. As amended. I uh, second amended. item 4.1 as amended. Okay, any, any comments from the board? No. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. It's a Congratulations, Congratulations to both of you. Congratulations. And please don't feel like you need to stay because we all have to get up and go to school in the morning. So we appreciate you coming. Okay, so um, as the community knows, this academic year we took a hard look at our security in the district. Um, and just today we reviewed our middle school and elementary school um, audit with Alteris. And um, some of the recommendations that they made, we were able to implement immediately. And um, one of the 
strong recommendations they asked us to consider, which we now need to come back to before we talk about Greeley, is um, whether or not we want to consider creating the vestibules or the, uh, the person traps at all five buildings uh, moving forward. And we were able to support that through our own budget mm -hmm. because the, uh, the cost associated with it is something that we're able to um, be able to move forward with. So I need to understand conceptually if that's what the board uh, would like us to begin to do so we can start preparing um, the resolutions that need to be uh, accepted by you in order for us to have those plans sent up the state ed so that we can begin to seek their approval to begin construction in um, the summer of 2019. And within those plans, we would also recommend that we redesign the entryway to Bell to make it handicap accessible. So uh, we'd like some feedback from you at this time as to how you'd like us to move forward with the five buildings specifically, and then we'll go and talk a little bit more about Greeley. Okay. So at this time, I'll open it up for board, for board comments. Um, as you heard, Christine would like some direction from the board to see if there's any consensus in moving forward with the, with the vestibule plan. So... I mean, I just feel if we were going to build a new school, we would certainly build it that way. Mm -hmm. um, so it just seems to make sense to retrofit the buildings um, with current best practices. Um, and I think it, the designs we've seen, I'm sure they'll change, but um, they were still charming and inviting and warm and friendly and it didn't feel um, oppressive or in any way contrary to the spirit of the district or the buildings. And I think it's a, you know, I think it's a smart thing to do. So, John, I have a question. Um, we can we can absorb these costs into our budget, or how do we do that? Well, I think if we're doing it, I definitely you know we you know, uh, the superintendent made it very clear that you know it's not going to come out of the budget itself. Mm -hmm. So you know we're doing it next summer. Um, you know we're going to run through a whole school year, so we may have excess funds during the year. And we have to, we can look to our fund balance also. Okay. <clears throat> but definitely we will not increase the budget because of this. Okay. I mean, from a, a security and from a design, as Allison said, designs will probably change as we, as we move forward. But I think it's something we should go forward. My, again, my concern was just how we're going to get through the financials with it. All right. So if we're Thank comfortable you. with the with the with the balance and that we have funds to do that, I know it was a bigger picture with really and a and a huge package, but I think that I I think in 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 essence we've we've tried to do that at the elementary schools mm -hmm. without without the construction we've tried to do the best we can without construction of um, the vestibules mm -hmm. and I think these plans, especially the one as it was amended for Bell, is is still keeps the character of the school. I think the handicap access is important as well. Um, and I think just for security reasons, to piggyback on what Allison said, that were we constructing a new school today, it wouldn't even be a question that we would construct that. And in terms of, you know, first, you know, a, a first stopping point to really prevent anything in our schools, I, I think it's important. I think it's, I think it's doable. And if it's financially responsible, I think it would help protect all of the children and make everyone feel a lot safer in terms of, um, day-to-day -day operations of the schools. I have one other question. Joe, I know you're not held to this. From a timeline point of view, how long will this take, do you think, based on your discussion? Well, well we'd, we'd go through state ed. Right. I'm we talking about the actual, oh, the actual construction. Oh, the actual construction? The actual, right. It, it, it could be as small as three months. A lot of them are not a ton. Bell's going to be a lot of work. Right. But the other schools aren't going to be a lot of work. So really, really, out of the five schools, just Bell and Graflin. Because so Graflin, we had to build out. So if we started this end of June next year? Oh, it would be ready for school opening. Okay. So as a follow-up question, that I don't quite understand what we're going to do differently at uh, Warrenbrook and West Orchard and Seven Bridges. What are we building there? We already have a vestibule. <coughs> Correct. That's why it would be pretty easy there. But what are we doing to upgrade those? Okay, so the uh, if you're looking at Roinbrook, I'm looking at all. Okay, well let's look at Roinbrook. So Roinbrook has the two doors already, and uh, if you walk into the right, in the vestibule, there's a wall there. Behind that is some office space. Uh, that would be where the guard would be. There would be a, a glass opening there, 
So you'd come in to the vestibule and the guard would be behind that glass wall there and he would take your information and then buzz you through. So the key, re key really is that there are two sets of doors already, but right. we only lock one set right now. Right. So if we build this, we'll lock both sets. It's really not a man trap as it is now, but it's easily it's retrofitted to be that. And, and then also right now, the guard is way inside in the lobby. Right. But couldn't you put a desk in the vestibule and call it a man trap? It's not wide enough. It would be in the way of uh, fire. Fire eaters. hazard, I think, right? So that's the same thing for the other? Uh, West Orchard would be the same thing when you walk into that vestibule on your left. Um, you know, is the office on the other side. So you'd have the, you know, the guard sitting there with an opening there. So that's the same there. Um, uh, uh, Grafflin needs to have a whole... John, the, the, amount, the schools that don't need... Not, not don't Grafflin, need the construction. Not Those schools... What on average are we going to spend per vestibule? Do you want to pull? I mean, we have, we have to pull up. You got to pull it up. Yeah, I know the total cost. Why, why did you ask other question? Let me see where I can find it. That was pretty much my. <laughs> uh, I'll ask you another question. So, um, another question. <laughs> well, so, so at Bell, we would move the handicapped entrance to the front portico so that everybody we would become a single point of entry. Right, everybody Correct. would come in through that. Right. Right now, if you're in a wheelchair or you're disabled in some way, you don't enter through the front door. No, you have to go all the way around to you know where the you know like the band rooms are, and there's a bus in there. Okay, I do have the cost now. So, um, Rowing Brook is 166,000. Um, Graflin, like I said, you had to build out, so it's 546,000 because you had to build the entire front. Um, West Orchard is 46,000. Uh, Seven Bridges is 155. Uh, Bell is 350. This is the revised one. Originally, it was just 16,000 be before they re redo the for right. the handicap. Right, we did that. Um, and yeah. So right. all together uh, is one 1.26 million for the five schools. Well, originally I was going to suggest we just do Bell and uh, Grafflin, but in light of the difference in costs, I don't have any objection to doing the other ones. Okay. Well, I, I think that one thing that's really important is that the kids come to school and they feel that school is a, an inviting and nurturing place where they feel safe. Um, and they don't feel like they're in a prison. And I feel that uh, the plans here accomplish that. I think that they're in, in keeping with the character of the schools and that they're, you know, they feel like nurturing places within the schools. Um, I also think that based on everything we've heard that it is definitely best practices to have, uh, to have these improvements made. It doesn't make sense to have people come into the school and have full access to the schools before they're fully vetted. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's kind of an, a no-brainer for me, especially if it's, uh, if it's you know, maintaining a nurturing environment. Uh, we're doing it within the budget, so I think that covers the financial aspects of it, and um, so I would be, I'd be in favor of pursuing uh, these, you know, these improvements. Okay, so I'm hearing that basically from everyone. So we'll start moving forward and begin the preparation process and we'll keep you updated as we um, get closer to needing to pass resolutions to support it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then let's talk about Greeley, right? Because this is, we've had um, extensive conversations about this, uh, about the, our high school. Um, and initially we had talked to the community about whether or not it made sense to redesign the front or reconfigure the entranceway. Um, and it wasn't clear during that process that you know when we had asked for feedback whether or not we had enough support to make either of those adjustments so we hit the pause button and we asked john uh, and robert rhodes to chair a task force um, with Greeley stakeholders to talk about what are some things we can think about doing in september to address some of the concerns that were raised during that feedback process from kids from parents and from our faculty to help make um, our school safer. 
And we had talked about tonight being the night that um, this group would, would uh, present recommendations or some of the ideas that the task force had um, discussed for our consideration so then we can begin the planning process for opening in September. Um, and I just want to acknowledge while John is leading this, uh, led the, the group with Robert, Joe, Jane, and Jeff were all part of the process. So when we're discussing the, um, the feedback from that committee, all will be participating in that conversation tonight. So John? Okay. So the starting point was that on April 27th, mm -hmm. um, Christine, the superintendent, sent out the email. And basically, these are the two, these are on the uh, slides now. These are the two um, issues that uh, you know, she, she, she recommended. The first one is to make short-term recommendations for changes effective September 1, uh, 2018, uh, to be, be presented today. And the second one is there is a long-term recommendation. So our committee didn't deal with this number two, we deal with the number one. And we have a committee made up of 16 uh, stakeholders. And uh, other than Jane, Jeff, J Joe here, we also have Susan Fisher, who is the uh, PTA chair for Greeley. And she was uh, a member. We also have law enforcement members. Uh, we have um, a community member. We have students. We have teachers. We have other administrators. So uh, we met three times. Um, and we came up with a list of short, well, we, we, at, the, at the first meeting, we really just brainstormed. And we just, everyone just came up with ideas when we put it on the board. And eventually, uh, we started talking about whether or not they are short-term or long-term. So we actually have a list of long-term items as well. But uh, that, that list is not going to be, be presented here because uh, our task is to talk about the short-term recommendations. And the list of the long-term has been given to uh, Christine already, and probably the next committee or the next group will be working on that. And we actually have one item is on the both the short as, uh, as well as the long, because we figured that that particular item probably would, would require further discussion. And uh, even though it could be done um, in the short term, but um, you know probably would take some discussion and be, uh, the decision could be made later. And uh, also, we made it very clear to each member, we, we talked this through because each item that we're going to talk about here um, can be accomplished during the summertime from now until September 1. But collectively, if we want to do all of them, it's probably impossible to accomplish all of them. So at the end of the day, we probably have to make some choices. Um, so my three other colleagues were chiming here. So this is the starting list. And this is not in any kind of order. Um, we're not prioritizing it. And this is just the list. You want to talk? Joe, you want to talk about the first one? Sure. You were doing so good. I didn't want to <laughs> jump in. All right. So, so as John said, this is not in any type of um, uh, order. This is just how we put it out there. So the first one is a 2911 internal emergency number, and um, the teachers were asking for this. It's a way to get a hold of an administrator quickly, uh, and the first administrator doesn't pick up, it just keeps ringing to every administrator. Right now, they have to dial their cell phone number, um, and it's cumbersome to try to get somebody. This isn't for like an emergency where you need 911, but it could be I need an administrator um, in my classroom or something. So uh, we all thought this was a very good idea and easy to accomplish. Any questions on it? Okay. Um, student IDs. Uh, that's an idea to have. So students all would have an ID and it would be color coded to the year. Uh, of the, and then so every year they would have to get new ones uh, and it, it would, would change so we can identify uh, students better. And also the color code is actually, uh, the, the recommendation is by grade. So the seniors, let, let, I just throw a number, uh, the, uh, the color. The seniors may have their ID as, as red, and so when they come in and out, they can be recognized as seniors. Um, and so they would change annually, so that right. for security reasons, those colors would change annually, and everyone would get a new ID annually. Right. Mm -hmm. 
that serves multiple purposes. purposes. Yeah. If you're traveling with kids and they don't have a license, it's good mm -hmm. to have a state ID. Also, um, for leaving campus. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so maybe it, using my example, the one with the red can leave campus. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. There are other issues associated with it in terms of, uh, let's say, some students um, forget their IDs. And what do we do with that? Right. Um, we looked at ways to either tie the ID to something they needed, uh, such as a lunch <laughs> payment plan, uh, or and or um, seeing if there's any way to create an ID on a phone, like right. an app, oh. so that you could uh, either have the barcode and or some sort of identification. Because so, most so students won't lose their phone, but they'll lose their ID. So if you look at our long-term list that it was sent to uh, submitted to the superintendents right. that. This item is also on the long term. Right, but it's on the long term list how, how sophisticated features. we can get with the technology to, to because move well, towards we, a we, scanned ID. Come in every time they come in and out, but this, week, this is a start. This is something right. short term. I think, mm -hmm. I think the ID builds a sort of sense of community amongst the students also. They all have an ID. We, all, we, we talked that. about various measures too in terms of um, it, changing the culture a little bit. As much as we want it to be um, congenial and want them to feel that they can move around, the culture of wearing it like they would at college around their neck, etc., and get used to having it around so that, they, that the absence of it would, would mean something to them. So that's another issue. Who wants to talk about the next one? I'll be happy to. Okay. Uh, it says on the screen, more preparedness, increased training, high -E, open areas, send you promise visitors not open doors for strangers, et cetera. Um, I think that there's a multiple levels to this, but in, in the short term, immediate term, um, we need to increase training and through the increased training, start to change the culture. When I say change the culture, I don't mean change the entire culture of the school, but to get people to start thinking of, you know, see, some, see something, say awareness. something type yeah. of awareness. Um, you know, don't just open a door because somebody knocked. Um, and then uh, there's, a, there's a gentleman uh, who was part of the committee who's very active in Sandy Hook Promise, um, which is an organization that was formed after Sandy Hook that does a lot of training for schools in terms of safety and protocols and ideas like that. And uh, he certainly was willing to uh, help us get involved in that sooner rather than later. Um, and I think he can and should. Um, and so Those are yeah. a lot of free programs that they come in. And again, this is more for the... Um, social and emotional piece of this, which I think everyone on that task force felt was really important. So the kids know how to identify maybe children are at risk or when there's a problem or, or and what procedures to take and to, um, to have a better cultural awareness of their fellow classmates, of their surroundings, and to prevent that from, from the inside out, these kind of issues. And uh, then we, then I'm going to roll, Joe. <laughs> you can keep going, Jeff. <laughs> uh, it says station person at entrance to Warnbrook Road. I think that sort of understates it. Um, but the concept is rather than build a, uh, a guard house with a big arm like you're going into a garage, um, s something similar to other schools in Westchester where you have a, a souped up golf court, if you will, with uh, security personnel there with that. Uh, for most of the day, it's not during the very early morning, like the 7.30 to 7.45 when cars are piling in, um, nor to 2.35 time, but most of the day to have stop every single visitor. Visitors will have, you know, if you expect a visitor who goes on the guest list, he will have a list or she will have a list. Um, and to try and identify um, anybody coming onto the campus before they get to, to the front of the school, because one, because Greeley is more of an open campus, and two, the sooner you identify somebody who shouldn't be there, the better we are. And Joe and the other members of some of the other members of the task force went to see some of this in action, um, which is helpful in other schools to look at best practices. Other districts that have had some of these procedures before, and especially with the with the mobile cart and how it works, it seemed like you know something very feasible that would add an extra level of security here and not be overly intrusive but would would have accountability so everybody could keep track of the visitors in and out um, so can I ask us so how does the mobile cart stop cars does it uh, is it stationed in the middle of the road or mm -hmm. yes what what exactly yes, we talked about a turn road. by the senior parking lot or we would find the appropriate location right. Joe would work on We've and then when it stopped in the middle of the road then it drives up to the driver and says, can you tell me why? The driver drives up to him. It's the like, okay. you know, like a toll booth almost. 
right? So it, you pull up to it. He's either in the car or he or she's either in the car or out of the car. And is there the something to stop the car? There's a big, very There's big a sign that says okay. stop the right, right in front of the front vehicle. Of this okay. Diego. Okay. And, um, you know, and then he'll ask questions. It would be deep enough inside the entrance, but not so far deep, so that the car could turn around if it was rejected. Right. But, uh, you know, it wouldn't cause major traffic problems also. It, it is Any really, more traffic it problems. It is really a cultural change. So what, what this person will start a day is that he or she, this person, will have a list of all the scheduled visitors um, for the day. Uh, who is coming to visit, uh, gu let's say, guidance department or to, to visit the administrators. So this person has a list. So when a visitor pulls up, then, then he, he or she is going to check off the list and then call in to, to the office um, to make sure that uh, it's legit. And, and then this person, after checking the ID, will be let in to the, the premise. And then this person still has to go through the front for uh, ID check and get a, get a visitor's pass. So what, what happens when a parent gets a frantic call from their student saying, I forgot my homework, I'm going into my class now, you know, are you home, mom or dad? Can you bring it right now? We still have to go through that. So, but the person won't be on the list. Yeah, then, then we call in. And they can call in. They'll call yeah. in and, and, then, and, then, and so who, so they call in to the main office? Yes, they'll call, for example, I would just tell you right now, our guard, his name is Bill Webb. Mm -hmm. So the, the front entrance guard will call Bill and say that to expect, let's say, Vicky to come in and if this Vicky doesn't show up in five minutes, ten minutes, then we need to do a search because there's some a person missing, right? The person but said what that. What happens? You show up and say, "My kid asked for his homework." You call Bill, Matt, Matt, or one of your children would be uh, at the front desk with Bill, saying, "I need my homework." So they approve of you coming in. But if you didn't show up right away, mm -hmm. then we know he let you in because like you didn't get the bill right away. I let you in, but they haven't showed up here, so that. So we know there's, by definition, there's somebody around the premises without anything. Um, so if you don't go from one station to the other on a timely basis, um, then that would be a flag. I think um, we, if we understand what we want to do, then we'll come up with the logistics right. to support right, it. Right, the exactly. procedures right. to support so what there we are want. a lot of other districts that we can model our procedures off of. So once we decide, okay, we're going to we are going to move forward with X, Y, and Z, then we'll figure out, okay, how are we actually going mm -hmm. to put this into practice? Right, all, the, all these issues came up and within the discussion, mm -hmm. and there's, you know, besides kid missing his homework, there's a thousand edge cases. Mario's Pizza wants to deliver, you know, what do you get? <laughs> yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So, there's, you know, there's a lot of edge cases here that sure, will, yeah. will be addressed as part of the planning process yeah. and the protocols that are put in place. So, so, so what Christine is saying is that we are going to go down this path, we, we will come up with the procedures, because there's another piece for example, uh, we're talking about the student ID, because right now our policy is that only seniors have open campus. So at the end of the day, not at the, the end of the day, during the day, <laughs> you have to have a red pass. Let, let's assume the seniors use the that red ID, red. then you have to have a red ID to in order to leave campus, because you have to go through this, this guard. There's all sorts of cases that you know, we'd have to look at and how to address right. I think um, for the purpose of what we're doing here, I don't think we want to get bogged down in the logistics of how we're going to make it happen. I think we want to decide what are we going to make happen, and then we'll work on mm -hmm. putting it in into practice. So and I also think it's dynamic. You know, we'll yeah. come up with problems in the early stages, and we'll address it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the next one. I think we should put the next one to the last, so we can do the other other ones. If, if yeah. That's okay. Well, the next one was school, is school resource officer, and we'll talk about that last because there's other issues here. Um, additional security guards. Um, we have now uh, three. Uh, is it three or four? Four. Four. Um, four security guards, greeters um, at, at the different entrances. We would add um, a Roman guard, uh, a roaming, not Roman, like A.N. Yeah. Um, Guard, which would help um, in terms of one, if, if it's if a uh, existing guard has to go on a break for some reason, um, help just to wander the uh, during that wander the premises and make sure there's nobody else wandering the premises. Um, also, trying to uh, could help with traffic with the custodians and 
one of the other things is to make the tire a little more visible um, so that people know who they are and how to get okay. to them in case of a... Uh, and then Joe can report out on the, the car readers. Sure. Um, so this is one of, this is, would be on my list as one of the top priorities. Not that you asked me, but that would be one of my top priorities. Um, th this is um, a new lock that would uh, go onto all the rooms. It would give me the ability to do a lockdown um, remotely. It would lock every single lock, uh, door in the, on, on campus. Uh, it's a card access system, so we would get rid of our keys, so we wouldn't have to worry about somebody losing a key. Uh, in a lockdown, it could be locked down by a lockdown card, uh, by a button, by a computer, by um, a cell phone. If, um, in the worst case, none of that happened, uh, and the inside there's a deadbolt uh, that the teacher could lock the door very quickly uh, and not use a key. Um, it, the inside of the lock tells you when it's in a lockdown. It has a different color on the screen. Um, it uh, doesn't need power, so if the power's out, it's still going to work. And if there was a lockdown and somebody had my card uh, in a lockdown, that card doesn't work anymore. There's special cards to unlock the doors in a lockdown. I, I know you were talking, we were talking in the committee about a, a pilot program. Have we done that? Uh, we started uh, installing all the, um, the cold loads and all the wiring for it today. And we should have the locks tomorrow, we're hoping. And it's going to be in the upper K uh, in all those classrooms. So those teachers will have you know, a week to, to play with it. Um, the, the system also gives me remote times that I could. So the, the school day ends at you know, 3 o'clock, and I want all the doors locked at 4 program, all the doors are locked at 4. You want to unlock at 6 a.m., they will unlock at 6 a.m. So that works for things like security in the summer and uh, right. security at any time other than... Any time. And I can re remotely unlock a door, so, you know, somebody needs access to, you know, classroom 205, I can remotely unlock that. So the next one is policy for messages to school, police, community during emergencies. We just thought that uh, it's important to have a standard message uh, for different scenarios. So we, we need to come up with a policy f for that. And uh, the next item is director of security. You know, we talked about, Joe and I, we just talked about it, whether it's uh, director of uh, security or called a supervisor of directories. Uh, not directory, of security. So this person will be responsible for the school district uh, uh, security. And, uh, you know, we thought that that is a good idea. Um, do, um, do other surrounding school yeah. districts have a director of security? Is this something typical? Some do. Uh, some, you know, outsource services. So there's a lot we could research there. Some do. Mm -hmm. And also, I think depending on the size of, of the district, yeah. a small district will probably not have one. No. And the amount of security guards we're mounting up to have, it would be good to have somebody daily monitoring them. We could look at, you know, we come up with a, a whole plan of what this person's going to do, and it might be part-time. So there's a lot we, we could still look at. Well, what, what have you seen uh, compared, uh, in comparing school districts of similar size? You know, the school districts we usually compare ourselves like to. Bedford or? Right. Right. But it's probably not something that historically a lot of districts had, my guess, going forward. These are going to become positions that are going to be more prevalent. And it's an enormous task. Right. Training staff on doors and, and security guards and monitoring who's supposed to be in buildings if there's people that aren't supposed to be in buildings. It's, I mean, I, you know, you know I feel like you feel like you have a lot right. already on your plate. So I. Absolutely. Know. Um, you know, districts do a combined effort. Some have an outside company that comes in and does training. Uh, districts that have an SRO, that's different there too, that the SRO is in charge of some type of security stuff also. Uh, Jeff, I don't, know so you, I, I don't know whether you remember this. When, when you first came on board, you that remember was 11 the years ago, Jeff. Yes. <laughs> do you remember the first year there was one person called Brian Hill? 
he was responsible for security, and he worked one or two days a week. Right. I remember that. Day. Yeah. yeah. So, Joe, we're talking about director of security, and Jeff sort of pushed up a little later the SRO. So, these are not mutually exclusive. They could work together. They might not work together, depending on the, the path we want to go down. An SRO wouldn't fit the whole role of that, not at all. No, but I'm saying if we, had a direct, if we had SROs, we still might need a director of security, we might not. It's just, we're, yeah. we're just as, as Christine said, we're just sort of talking about different Right, there's a lot. We, we'd have to sit down, okay, what do we want in a security, a supervisor okay. security? Mm -hmm. or are they there to supervise the guards and do training? Or we're looking at something bigger? I almost, I believe it's got to be a combination of a couple things. Right. I still believe we need outside training, the trainers to come in and do training. So I know there's a bill floating around in the state senate regarding school aid for all kinds of initiatives like this. So I'm wondering if you know anything about it. And I, I think it's a very large bill. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to stay, you know, as written right now. But and I'm not even sure what the timing of it is. But I know that it's certainly something that a lot of school districts are are looking at. And so um, just curious if you know through your professional groups, uh, whether you've heard about this and what the, what the timing might be for that. I'm not sure what is happening right now, but I remember uh, in March, this was part of the, the budget bill, but that was not. Uh, <coughs> I think there was something that came out an, after. There was an article a couple of days ago on that. And, uh, if I can find, I'll send it to you. There's some major advocacy going on from the superintendents to have us, the uh, state, provide some funding or funding relief for SROs as well as some latitude and flexibility in hiring SROs as a part of new legislation, which is still in the process of being developed and fleshed out. So one of the things that I was going to talk about when we got to the part where we are going to discuss how we are going to move forward for September is that it might make sense for us to keep the SRO piece on the long-term plan and wait for that um, to work its way through the system before we start making decisions and then have to make adjustments based on what that legislation looks like. I'd rather know up front what are our options rather than make a decision um, and then find out after the fact that we may have had more flexibility and may be able to take advantage of different funding sources to support something that might have looked a little different. Um, so one of the things I was going to suggest is instead of moving forward with an SRO now, let's let that process play out a little bit further, but continue to talk about that as we look towards that January recommendation piece. Mm -hmm. And then if we're still in the same place where we need police support or presence in September, then we can, we can talk about that. That doesn't mean that um, we can't do that immediately like we did back in April. Go ahead. Okay, labeling uh, rooms, doors, buttons, uh, exterior doors. Um, as a committee, we didn't really all agree on this particular one, but we thought that since it was discussed, we should put it up there because there are two schools of thoughts. You, you know, it, should you lab label each door um, uh, on the outside? On the outside, because then everyone knows which door is. Call yeah, because, like the, if it, depending on which police department or which uh, security consultant you talk to, um, like for instance, Newcastle Police have detailed plans of all that buildings. Right. They know exactly where to go and when. Um, so, so, so it's sort of a, I don't know about controversial, but it's sort of a disputed issue where some people think it's an advantage to have the, the uh, doors all labeled and rooms and all that, and some think that the advantage is to people already have the plans and not to label. Mm -hmm. Right. So. So next one is safe, safety so, booklet. Uh, these safety booklets would be in the classrooms. Right now we have um, there's like a one-page sheet. It's like a quick guide for the teacher to look at quickly if there's an emergency to move, run through the uh, uh, directions of it. So we want to put a whole booklet together. It's kind of like a flip booklet. Um, if you have a lockdown, you do this. If you have a... Um, right. Some other emergency, then you do something else. So instead else. of having the one page, it'll be a flip book, and it has actually pictures along with uh, the words. Mm -hmm. A lot of schools have them. Uh, BOCES can provide them for us through the coaster. So. Okay. Bucket of supplies. Uh, the supply bucket. Uh, these are things that you would have if it was, you were in, a, in the classroom for a long period of time, or if you had to leave to an off-site 
you would take it with mm -hmm. you. I mean, this is similar to what a lot of buildings do in Manhattan post 9-11. Right, um, emergency supplies bag. readily hand, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one, Jeff, you want to do that? Okay, the uh, buzzers on exterior doors that constantly get propped open. The, the, two, the two doors that get propped open the most, and I don't want to imply that they're the only ones that get propped <laughs> open, are the locker room doors. Right. Correct. Um, and it's direct access to students by going in the locker room. Right. Um, so working about how to either put on buzzers or put on slide, you know, card readers. And they have card readers on them now. So, so if the door is open for a, a period of time, the buzzer you know, we can set, then the right. buzzer will go. go on. Um, so we don't want people propping those doors open. And then the next one is the after-school protocols. Uh, this is actually recommended by the uh, athletic director, uh, Jason. Um, so we, we need to think about after-school. It's not just uh, sporting events, but also performing arts or continuing education. So, so we're thinking about um, maybe we, we need uh, after-school protocol for safety. See, that's something that a director of security would work in conjunction with the administration Jason and all the people who have yeah. after-school programs um, could help work out those protocols. Jane, you want to talk about the next one, the <coughs> student connection? Well, we talked about advisory, again, which I know we've circled back on that a lot. And again, it's, it's back to the social and emotional piece of this about the students feeling connected with each other, with the faculty, um, and um, just mental health issues in general that would be addressed by that. So I know we, were, we wanted to talk about an advisory period or some sort of period that would, you know, have that type of student to faculty connection. Um, we also then talked about 117 and a barrier arm at, on the, um, near the pole barn. And we, I think, um, I'm not sure the exact placement we had talked about, but in terms of cars coming through through that back way right. that we felt that was a, a, a fairly simple addition and could provide additional safety. But don't we have a, a gate there ready, Joe? There's a gate there, but it's, it, uh, for about half the day, it's unlocked. I have so many deliveries. But okay. what so we want to do is we're going to leave the gate open to 117, prevent the people from going down the access road that goes past the fields and all the way down to the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. So they, maybe the gate will be open, depending on you know, what they discuss. But Regardless, there'll be an, uh, you know, like a barrier an easy arm. deterrent barrier arm. Right. Yeah. But, but, yeah. Can't you just throw the gates that are there right now? Open up and close them? They're on an automatic, but if you ring the office and Jim or I aren't there, then the UPS guy's sitting out there okay. and he leaves. <laughs> we talked so uh, it, it makes it a little issue with getting on our supplies. So, the, I mean, the barrier arm, which is kind of similar, it's on the other side of tennis court. So it would just be, we would put that, I thought it was a pretty quick, easy fix. <coughs> um, we also talked about additional student training with safety procedures, additional drills. There are state mandated lockdown drills and certain procedures throughout the year. Um, but we did have some student representatives on the committee and some faculty and, and everyone felt that these, um, these training sessions should perhaps be more in depth and more frequent so that the students um, really felt prepared depending where they are in the, in the school in case of any sort of situation. So um, there was a discussion of additional student training with that throughout the year. Um, there was also a review um, of the open campus policy. Um, traditionally, and that the rule is that only seniors are allowed to leave the campus throughout the day, um, but there's an enforcement issue, which we were talking about and wanting to address and how that can be how that can be tackled in terms of a safety issue on campus, leaving campus, um, the IDs would be a help there. So that, that, would, that was another thing that we would have to discuss, again, procedurally, how to go about enforcing that effectively. Um, and then um, to review our community use during school hours, um, coming to use the track, et cetera. That, you know, we talked to Jason a little bit about that and really you know, revisiting our policy on in-school during school use, uh, during school hour use of the premises, you know. A again, it's a, it's yeah. it's an awareness and 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 it's a difficulty because certain you know community members which we understand like we want people to feel like they can come to our campus and go run on the track, etc. But we have to develop procedures um, that make sure that that we have proper safety protocols in place. I think what what I came away with was that 
um, especially the, the folks in the school, students and faculty and administrators, they kept talking about the connection between staff and uh, the students. Yes. They mm -hmm. talk about the social emotional uh, part, health, and also uh, they talk a lot about training. Uh, right. Just not students, but everyone, um, staff, um, you know, the training they need to know. Um, a how lot of awareness do, raising do. issues. And then yes. also another thing came out, it's not on the list, but um, they, they want us to mention was that uh, whatever we do, we need to tell them the why. Um, you know, there's an explanation why we why we're doing this, so so they can get a buy. You know, we can get a buy in, and you know, there's a reason behind our action. I think that that was very important. And we did discuss, which was helpful, having students on our committee to, uh, and faculty as well, to discuss the the um, habits and how quickly they can change a habit, um, and and maintaining the the feel of this campus while being aware that it, they can change simple habits pretty easily, and they seemed responsive to that, that, that there are some safety me measures that you can implement that may seem odd at first, but once you got in the habit of it in a very short period of time, would seem second nature and would not really change the feel of the campus. So we discussed that as well. I'm glad to see you had this concept of advisory. I remember bringing this up seven years ago when I first got on the board. Right. Harrison is laughing. It's true. Um, you know, we know that we have this at the Life School. Yep. The Life School was started as an experiment, mm -hmm. and I've always maintained that um, the Life School is great, and it's time to spread some of that experiment to the general, you yes. know, the general campus, the main campus. Um, an advisory, I thought, was um, a really excellent way to build connection between students because they each have groups um, that built sort of a circle of trust among students and faculty, um, but I, I, you know, what always came up as a barrier was the scheduling issue. Right. So I think if we can work to get around that, um, you know, I've been maintaining for seven years that this is something we should do. So I, I hope that we can be on our way to to really looking at this and you know seriously. Um, okay. Yes, you know, it, it's a sort of you know social emotional anchor for kids. Yes. I guess we need so to prioritize that. Yeah, that. right. So um, I have a recommendation. Can I share it? And then you guys yes. maybe can. So we have a starting point. So I think for September, what might be reasonable is we increase our security guards here um, by two, have one at Roaring Brook Road, and have a roaming guard mm -hmm. uh, through Summit, and then hire someone, um, hire supervisor support from Summit part time, maybe point four to help uh, kind of fill that director of security um, piece that we, th that additional support that we think that we may need. And then if we contract with Summit to do that, then they would be supporting um, both Joe and the security staff who works for us with Summit that we contract with. Um, I think we should look at the card ID system color coded for the students. Um, the electronic card reader doors with the deadbolt option at the high school that we should do the safety go cards or the booklets in each classroom in the same exact location so we have some consistency across this building and how we're handling particular security issues. Um, I've had the uh, opportunity to be here more frequently and I've been in a, uh, a few drills now with the high school and there because I think we're so big it lends itself to inconsistency so this will help solve that issue. Um, I think we should do the internal emergency number. Of course, we should continue our training or maybe expand our training with our faculty and our students. Um, and then I think we should take some uh, a look at our two policies. One is how we're communicating during emergencies. When we had that um, issue here with the kiln, I pushed two messages out to the community, I think, and to the faculty and to the kids real time. I think that was really helpful um, that we took advantage of the system that way. So I think we need to talk about not only in Greeley, but in the district, how we can do that when we're, when we're uh, dealing with particular issues to get real-time information out there. And then um, look at and making sure we firm up our community use during school hours. And uh, by s having the guard at the front of Roaring Brook and then shoring up the gate uh, in the back by Joe's, we'll be able to control that more frequently. Mm -hmm. um, for our long-term uh, moving forward, I think we need to look at advisory 9 through 12, SRO K-12, 
uh, this concept of go bags across the district, not just in the high school. Um, these ajar door buzzers, because yeah. if we're going to do that, we have to do that district wide, not just at Greeley. Um, and then we are going to, if we can't do it this summer, want to look at electronic card readers K through eight, if we wind up doing that here in the, in, in the high school. And then um, we'll have to look at whether or not we want to expand to open campus 9, 10, and 11, if we want to um, restrict kids to just walking off campus moving forward now that they can walk across the street. Like, I think that's a larger conversation that needs to happen and come before the board in January when we see what the traffic flow and patterns and what we learn from what when uh, right, the November across, opening the street across the street opens up. So this, these are just my, um, my thoughts based on the feedback from this group, all the survey feedback. Remember, I um, had the opportunity to run many of the focus groups. So um, I'm thinking that this might be the way forward, but I don't know if anyone else, any, if any of you had suggestions, you think I missed something, think I need to move something somewhere. Just um, for clarity, you were, in, you were including the, the station person and the cart, et cetera. At, yeah. Yes, okay. The, the person at, at Roaring Brook Road yes. and then a roaming guard for this building. Okay. Right? So two, increasing That's summit two. security by okay. two. And then um, asking Summit, because we've already reached out to them to see if this was a possibility, to have part-time part supervisor support here for Joe, to help assist Joe, and then to help assist. To um, assist Joe and assist the training and, mm -hmm. and maintain all the guards that we have. I, I think right. this is a very comprehensive list. I think this is doable. I think this is a great list. I just right. have one thing to add, because if we secure the front, I think we need to secure the back. The 117. Oh, yeah, I have that. Did oh, I say that? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that yeah. was in there. That. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I missed that one. Yes. Okay. Well, John and great. Joe, do you think that that summarizes kind of what you're thinking we could do immediately and then what we need to still continue to talk about? Absolutely. I totally agree. All right. So, and, and you have already, I know you're working on checking the doors, et cetera, and that could be done throughout the summer. Yes. Yeah. I, I think these are all reasonable recommendations. Um, you know, I know the group has been looking looking at these for a long time, and um, I I yep. I would have no objections to your implementing all of this. I can see some challenges with the student student IDs. It's a little bit of a cultural change, and you know, like you said, you'll work out the details. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I could see some problems down the road with right. kids just not wearing their IDs <laughs> and just having to enforce that. That could be a bit of a nightmare. Um, but, um, you know, aside from that, I don't see it. Did I miss anything, Jeff and Jane? Do you, do you think I missed anything? I think for the most part we captured the spirit of what we're talking about. I think about. so, too. And, and I know we are looking into whether it's, you know, Sandy Hook or something to, th as right. part of that training thing, to, mm -hmm. like while we work on advisory and a more long-term right. thing, which would involve change in scheduling, to bring some of that in for next year again to, you know, raise awareness for the kids. And, uh, yeah, I think that covers the things that, that okay. most people were primarily concerned with. So what I would like to do then is um, update the community on where we are. So I'm going to mm -hmm. put this together in sort of a press release, and then I'll also put uh, that we're going to move forward with the uh, man traps at the other five buildings, just because everyone's going to look for an update from me right? Uh, based off of this meeting. So I'll try to get something out by next Monday. <laughs> Okay. I think one, just to, it's not something we have to do immediately, or we can. But one of the other things that was discussed at this, at the uh, committee level, was that if we're going to whatever rules we put in, we should we should enforce it. I agree. And, I agree. You know, don't, you know, putting in rules and not enforcing them, or really it sends the wrong messages mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And we should really start enforcing whether that's open campus, not open campus, community use, not community use, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I think too, I think that's a great point, and I think this structure will allow us to begin to enforce a lot of different um, issues that we see here on our campus, particularly having someone vetting who's going in and out. It's going to address a lot of concerns we have about kids leaving who shouldn't, people coming in who shouldn't to use the facilities during the day. It'll stop a lot of that, so I think it'll be really helpful. And then we'll know if this, if we do all this, and we still have issues, then we really need to talk about, even though I know that people weren't um, overly receptive to it, whether or not we have to structurally change, change the Change to front. a single point of entry. But these are some really, um, these are some real changes to try to address a lot of the concerns. So I if this doesn't work, we got to revisit that. I think you're wrong, Christine. I don't think people were <laughs> against doing structural 
things in high school. I think they want, the community wants to look, do something like this first mm -hmm. and understand. And if we have to, then we do structural. So. Okay. I think, well, that I, I, I agree with you. I think what I also heard was try something else right. before we do what you, We're what doing you're this proposing. And then, and then we see where we go. Right. But hopefully we'll be able to um, make some real changes. It sounds good. And culture here mm -hmm. for the better, for the kids. So the SRO, we're going to do more research and more mm -hmm. see how it fits in both with the legislation and how it fits in with these other short-term changes and yeah. ultimately right. uh, make a decision on that in the future date. Yes, and I do believe, though, in September, if we feel like we need to continue a presence here, we can do that. But an SRO is a completely different um, <laughs> concept. It's a completely different concept than what we have happening here right now. But I do want to say I'm really appreciative of the town of Newcastle's presence here and the support that they've been given us, given us, given our, uh, given what we've asked them to do. So, mm -hmm. okay. I want to thank John and I want to thank Robert and Joe and Jane and Jeff and all the other members of the committee who worked on this in a really mm -hmm. short time period to come with some tangible uh, adjustments that we can make immediately that make sense for our kids and for everyone who uh, uses our facilities. So I do want to thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so then just to my last uh, comments of my superintendent's report, I just wanted to take a moment um, in our kind of our final meeting of the year publicly just to thank everyone sitting with me tonight uh, for helping me transition to our district. It was a significant adjustment for my family and for me professionally and the support you all afforded to me um, was invaluable and I wanted to just thank you for you and the larger community for welcoming me to Chappaqua with my children. Um, and I'm sorry to see Mary and Kasum go um, and move on, but I know they'll be doing amazing things in their new roles. Um, but in the same light, I'm really excited to welcome Tony and Adam, who's here. Still, yes, he comes I to almost been. every meeting um, to our district to partner with John and I um, and the rest of our team as we continue to pro provide um, the best possible program for our kids in the district. So I did just want to take a moment now that we've come to almost the end uh, to thank everyone um, for all their support and um, with that said, uh, I'm looking forward to commencement on Sunday and celebrating with all of our families um, as we honor our graduates. So thank you. Okay. And I, I would also be remiss if I didn't thank Kasum and Mary for your, your years of service here. You know, Mary, you've been here for a very long time and Kasum, a shorter period of time, but very impactful uh, to the, both of you in different ways. And I just want to, you will be very missed. Um, and I want, want to wish you all the best in your new position. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Thank yep. you. Okay. All right. Um, so at this time, I know uh, we're up to committee reports, and I know that, Warren, we have something on audit later on in the agenda, mm -hmm. so we'll leave that. Um, it's getting to be a late night. I don't think we have any any other committee reports at this time? That's a good way to lead right? into it. We don't okay. have any other committee reports. So, we, don't, we, don't have any other committee reports. we will move on right to public comment period. Uh, I just want to remind everyone we have a public uh, participation policy. Um, please come up, uh, state your name. Uh, speakers are limited to three minutes. Um, Speakers may not comment or discuss upon matters that are appropriate for executive sessions, such as matters regarding students, personnel, or negotiations. Um, and just remember that this is a public comment period and not a time for dialogue um, with the board. So anyone wanting to comment, please come up and uh, state your name. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sina Cushman. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. And that's Dr. Seuss from the Lorax. Ironic I chose Theodore Geisel as he actually helped to popularize the whole language movement along with our friends Dick and Jane. I'm here this evening to share our story and to advocate for change. You can make a difference. You can change the trajectory of a life and you can stop the you, you can stop the spirit of a child from being broken. I was a resident of Chappaqua for 14 years until mid-April. My husband Brad and I moved here from Brooklyn with our daughter. We bought a beautiful home, engaged in our community, our church, our pool club, 
the school, ASO, we look forward to our future here, and later welcome twin boys, who may, some of you may have seen today. One of the main attractions was the Chappaqua school system. Who could have predicted the Chappaqua school system would be the very reason we had to pack and leave our community, our dear friends, some of who are here tonight, <clears throat> the place that we'd known as a family of five. You see, our three children are kind, spirited, athletic, industrious, incredibly intelligent, and so very brave. They are also all dyslexic. Our daughter received services for 10 years and had a fantastic friend group and was able to navigate her way with grit, determination, and some wonderful teachers. She just finished her freshman year at American University. We knew it was different with her twin brothers, though, who are now 10 years old. At two and a half, we had them tested through the district for speech and language. They received six months of services, which we were grateful for. In first grade, we knew they were behind, very behind. We began tutoring and requested evaluations. The services were inappropriate and insufficient despite clear diagnosis and identification. Through second grade, one of our sons was teased for being the worst reader in class. He was taunted in the cafeteria and bullied on the bus. His self-esteem hit an all-time low in the spring of second grade. He came off the bus in tears daily. He hated school. Imagine failure over and over all day long. We had him tested externally and believed the official identification would change his IEP and services. As Margaret Bird said, diagnosis without treatment is cruelty. There was a two-year wait list at Windward for grade three, so we sent him to the Southport School in Connecticut. We thought maybe we'd get bus support, but no. So I drove anywhere from two to five hours a day for two years while his twin was tutored an hour before school. This was not sustainable. It was too much for our family. Dyslexia affects one in five children. That's 20% of the students in your district. This means that in every classroom from kindergarten to 12th grade sits roughly three children who have this learning difference, and that's a lot of kids. Dyslexia is real. OK, I, I, need, to, I need to continue for the, I need to continue. You'd have to make a motion. It's a neurobiological oh, difference. It manifests, I've been here for 14 years. Well, hold um, on one second. We just, me I would, I'm moment, respectfully please. just um, asking if I, I move that we better have more time. Okay, we, oh, you have to make a motion. We have to make a motion. I move that we better have more time. A second. Okay. okay. You have to give it. Can, can you give us an idea of? Um, yeah, I have like two more minutes. Okay, please go ahead. Wait, you have, well, hold on. I just, I just want to make sure we're consistent. You have to vote on it. We have to vote yeah. on that for an okay. additional. Okay, we have the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay, we're following our procedure. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. It's a neurobiological difference. It manifests in difficulty with language, reading, writing, and spelling. Dyslexic students typically have a high IQ and inherited the genetics. It does not go away. These are bright, gifted in many areas, and they can be taught to read. Bright children here in the Chappaqua School District are marginalized despite the vast, vast amount of research. They're held back and asked to change when the instruction is what needs to change. They're denied their potential due to school's continued lack of education in the area of dyslexia. I encourage you to challenge yourselves and read the history of the reading wars. Many of you might have read it by Nicholas Lehman. You will then more clearly understand how we got here. You'll see the struggle between whole language and phonics. You will understand why a district with educators predominantly schooled in the whole language era would be attracted to it in the reading recovery model, or RTI, the wait to fail system. Whole language holds that learning to read is a natural process like speech, and that children don't need much direction, direct instruction. Instead, surround them with books, and they'll become readers. This is absolutely the approach that's taken. In fact, just recently, the director of literacy, the quote was, to students who may struggle with or not enjoy reading and writing, what one piece of advice would you give? If somebody doesn't enjoy reading, they simply haven't yet found the right book. They need to speak with their teacher, parent, librarian, or friends to find the book that will hook them on to the magic of reading. That's simple. This approach was developed in New Zealand and intended to catch up kids who were behind. 
the wait to fail method doesn't work. And I'll skip to the bottom on what you can do and what I'm asking as I leave Chappaqua with my family. To the board, your mission statement. <clears throat> It's to create a community for learning where students, parents, and staff are joined in the pursuit of academic excellence and personal growth and caring. To seek to develop each student's full potential through a challenging curriculum, a diversified faculty, and a commitment to intellectual freedom. Appreciation of their self-worth. I'm asking just for three things. To act by accelerating your work in these three areas. Institute early screening in kindergarten. We test for hearing, which impacts 2% of the population, while dyslexia impacts 17 to 20. Employ early intervention, the right intervention. If your child was diagnosed with appendicitis, you wouldn't want a wait to fail treatment. Institute the structured literacy, research-based, evidence-based, multi-sensory teaching. You don't need to create anything. It's already there, and it's proven and train and certify your teachers. Teachers can chain the, change the brain of these children. Parents, continue to educate yourselves and advocate for others. There's many resources out there. These children have a right to appropriate, aggressive, evidence-based interventions for their neurobiological learning difference. And to the teachers, we had so many wonderful teachers here. We just want them to get the right training and tools to be able to reach these children. <clears throat> um, our daughter is an amazing self-advocate. Our son is thriving at the Southport School. And our son, Jack, now has a robust IEP with SMART goals and objectives. And he even got summer services um, in our new town, which we started in, in April. And as Albert Einstein said, everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. I thank you for the extra time tonight. I didn't come here for anything for our family, but to hope that you all will take it upon yourselves to make a change for these children in this community who really deserve it and they're hurting every day. very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to come up for public comment? Can I ask you, ma'am, to uh, submit a copy of that to the district clerk so that we can, a full text of it? Email it to her or something like that? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Doesn't have to be right now. Okay. You can do it later. Okay. So seeing that there are no further comments, we will we will move to uh, the business portion of our agenda. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, before we get, we'll do the, the minutes, we'll oh, just yeah, go. We'll go in order. Change, yeah. Okay. All right. So at this time, yeah. I'd like to move to item 3.1. May I have a motion to accept the minutes of May 23rd, uh, 2018? I move we accept the minutes of uh, May 23rd, 20, 2018. A second. Okay. Any questions? No. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Um, item 3.2. May I have a motion to approve the 2018-19 Board of Ed meeting schedule? Oh, I move we approve the schedule. <laughs> right. I move mean, I mean we had some. <laughs> Thank <meetings>. you, Allison. <laughs> okay. I I will second. Has anyone had a everyone had a chance to review those dates? Oh, I should say, is it as amended or have you cha did you change? I changed okay okay so as 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 stated in the agenda has anyone um had a chance to take a look i, I, I did take a look with Lisa Chaney, so thank okay you. Um, holly in the audience mm -hmm. have you looked at the backup for the meeting schedule mm -hmm. okay good. <laughs> uh, are you good with it mm -hmm. good okay um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, okay. Before I move 4.2 non-instructional, mm -hmm. I just want, because we've already um, approved 4.1 instructional, I just want to acknowledge Joe Kearns, who's here today, who was yes. appointed our varsity football coach. Yes. Oh. 
after a extensive uh, process, we are happy to have him lead the team into the future. And um, I just wanted to acknowledge that he is at our meeting tonight. And we're I very told you we passed you. Pleased to have him here. So, congratulations, now, Joe. With that Thank said, you. I'd like to recommend 4.2 non-instructional as presented. I will move 4.2. May I have a second? I will second 4.2. Any comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, I'd like to move items 5.1 and 2 together. The CSE summaries for the 2018 school year reported to the board on May 23rd, and the CSE summaries for the 2018-19 school year reported to the board on May 23rd. We have a motion and a second. I move 5.1 and 5.2. I will second. Any um, any comments? No? All in favor, no. please say aye. 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 Um, okay. Um, we have a motion to authorize the 2018-19 school year salaries of the non-aligned administrators um, as recommended by the superintendent of schools. I so move. 5.3. I, I will second. Any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Item 5.4, may I have a motion and a second to authorize the 2018-19 salaries of the confidential employees based on the superintendent recommendations. I shall move. A second. Questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, 5.5, may I have a motion to authorize the salary for the director of continuing ed as recommended by the superintendent. Th these are the 2018-19 salary. I move 5.5. I'll second 5.5. Questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, item 5.6, this is a resolution to certify lead evaluators of classroom teachers for um, this school year and to certify lead evaluators of building principals for this school year and to recertify lead evaluators for classroom teachers and building principals for this 2017-18 school year, all pursuant to Ed Law Section 3012C. I have a 5.6 that's written in the agenda. I will second 5.6. Any questions? I, 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 yeah, why, yeah, I mean, I know we're doing it for this school year, but why now? Why not? Is this something that should be I'm done? assuming they're being evaluated now? The, eva uh, the evaluations the, 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 are coming the, in? Yeah, this is the actual around the time of the year that we pass this on a yearly basis because of the training and when all the training is completed. So we want to make sure everybody's done before we put them on the agenda. So it's sort of retroactive, which would allow them moving yes. forward, but it's it's for the end of this year and then moving forward. Correct. Oh, okay. So we have a number of employees on here who will be here next right. year. So what do we do? Because but they have to be certified yes. because they finished their certification. Are, oh, we correct? Done that. We no, because we're right. evaluating this school year. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is that clarifying? Okay. Are we ready to vote? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, on item 5.7, may I have a, a motion to increase the sick compensated absence and the compensated absences? These are two different budget lines. One is for 131,000, the other is for 71,000. 71.6 thousand uh, to be funded from the employee benefit accrued liability reserve fund. I move 5.7. I'll second 5.7. Okay, any questions? No. no. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, may I have a motion on item 5.8 to accept the uh, recommendation of the audit committee, uh, uh, which is the internal audit report for capital project of revenues and capital projects including the response by the district and the GASB 75 report for the year ending June 30, 2018. I move 5.8. I will second 5.8. Warren, um, as a chair of the audit committee, it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Do you have The only thing I would say that, you know, we normally do one internal audit report a year. Mm -hmm. We did uh, revenues this year. We all, we've been doing capital projects on an ongoing basis because we've got so many capital projects going on. So you'll see capital projects next year and probably the following year. So As an add-on, in a sense, or they're, just they're, like they're, an ongoing? They're ongoing since we've got so many capital projects. Right. Just to understand what we're doing, make sure we're... Every, dotting our I's and crossing right, our T's. Right. Okay. And John Tobin does a great job, so 
he said, you know, he could continue doing that for us. Okay. Because normally we do capital projects as a specific year, but we're just doing it as a, as a like an add-on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, item 5.9, may I have a motion to approve the contract uh, for an independent contractor, independent contractor services with Christopher Weir as claims auditor for the school year 2018-19 at $86 per hour. I move uh, item 5.9 to hire Chris Weir as our independent claims auditor. I second that. Okay, any questions? He does a great job. I thank you, Chris Weir. You, yes. I'm glad to have him. Okay, mm -hmm. I, thank you. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, I'd like to take 5.10 and 5.11 together. These are for summer workshops uh, to approve a contract with Angela Stockman of WNY Education Associates for grades three to six in the Maker Writing Workshop for August, and also Thomas Romano for literacy work for grades five through 12 for uh, the August summer workshop. May I have a motion on these two items? I move 510 and 511. I'll second. Okay, any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'd like to take items 5.12 through 5.18 together. These are all contracts for health and wellness and educational services. Um, this is with Byram Hills, with Barcliffe Manor, with Westbrook Preparatory School, um, the Anderson Center for Autism, and three contracts, for each for one student, um, with Eastchester. So may I have a motion on, uh, and a second for items 5.12 through 5.18. So moved. I will second. Any questions on any of these? No. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, let's see. I would like to take 5.19 through 5.23 together. These are all approvals for contracts related to bond work. I'll, I'll go through them just for, you know, for transparency. Um, this is a contract with Lorelei Industries for Field C improvements for $1.2 million. Um, a contract for capital improvements to Greeley and the Chappaqua Public Library with MVM Construction uh, for $9.2 million contract with Southeast Mechanical for capital improvements to Horace Greeley and the public and the library for two million dollars and a contract with RLJ Electric uh, for capital improvements to Greeley and the public library in the amount of 2.4 million and approval with SNL plumbing and heating again for capital improvements at Greeley and the public library in the amount of uh, about one million dollars as uh, presented to the board. We have a motion and a second. I'll move 5.19 to 5.23. Second. Uh, okay. Um, any questions on any of, any of these items? Is there anything mm -mm. that uh, I, anyone should, would like actually, to add? These five contracts were awarded last at the last board meeting. Mm -hmm. These are the actual contracts uh, in wording, right. you know, so for you to approve right. mm -hmm. okay. and authorize the president to sign. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, we have a motion to approve item 5.24, which is um, with uh, Educational Data Services Cooperative Bid Program for the school year of 2018-19. I move 5.24. Second. Um, any questions? All in favor, please say aye. aye. I should have done these two together. Um, <coughs> item 5.25, we have a motion to approve um, the same educational data services bid programs for um, skilled trade for the 2018-19 school I'll year. 5.25, second. Any questions? No. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, I'd like to take items 5.26 through 5.34 together. These are all bid approvals. Mm -hmm. Um, these are bid approvals for uh, door and hardware from Hudson Valley, um, for boilers and burners from uh, Heating Solutions, LLC, for HVAC services, 
uh, with Atlantic Westchester, for printing and stationery services with Jam Printing, for masonry and asphalt work with Latonin Contracting, for tree removal and pruning with Maxner Landscaping, for construction and labor with Acorn Electrical, um, educational data services with various vendors, and uh, coach bus transportation services with Hudson Valley Charter Service. We have a motion and a second on all of these items. So I move 5.26 through 5.34. A second. Okay, any questions? Nope. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, item 5.35 may have a motion um, to approve the resolution declaring JAMF, is that how you pronounce it? JAMF? JAMF mm -hmm. software as the sole source of JAMF software. <laughs> and uh, uh, therefore, determining that the purchase is not is of JAMP is not subject to competitive bidding. I'm going to 5.35. I, I will second. I will second. Um, any questions other than that they are the sole source right. provider for this software? Um, any questions or comments? No. Just not, sub not subject to the bidding. Yes. We, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, 5.36 is for cooperative bidding. Uh, it's a motion to allow us to participate in the PE, PPM National Cooperative um, Service with the state, either the state of Pennsylvania or the state of California acting as lead agents uh, to make purchases of various materials and supplies for the school services. Um, if such, such contract were to be the, the lowest responsible bidder on the basis of best value. So it's allowing us to you know, participate with other larger contracts to get, get mm -hmm. best value for services. I move item 5.36. Um, I will second. Are there any questions? Yeah. John, I don't want to put you on the spot, but we were asked, trying to figure out before, what does PP? Right, we were discussing. PEPPM stand for? I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but it's just the name of the uh, cooperative, right? Okay. It's a name. I, I actually don't know what that stands for, <laughs> but I'll find out. All right, it's not. Right, so this is allowing, uh, authorizing the district to register for this program. Mm -hmm. Public education program, something. Yes, <laughs> right, that would make sense. Public education something, yes, okay. Um, okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so item 5.37 may have a motion to approve the proposal from Woodward and Curran uh, for additional design and permitting work for Horace Greeley High School Field C. I'm, I move item 5.37, Woodward and Curran. I will second. Any questions? Um, what are the additional designs that they'll be, they'll be um, doing? Because we had to get uh, DEP approval. It was apparently it was okay. a very very difficult uh, process. Okay. It, it, actually, mm -hmm. I met with uh, our engineer. He said this this process for the sea field was actually more difficult than the competition field. Than the turf wow. field. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So. Okay. So is it because the, of the drain, uh, the, the drainage? The drainage? Or? Yeah, I was yes, going to ask because that. Because they yeah, have that to do is the yes, I would think so. Stormwater treatment. Um, okay process and so this additional work plus also to be the um, the construction manager for the, the, the C field this is like the, the two, two fields we have a they did the competition field and there's a separate construction manager from the rest of the bond project because they have the expertise um, in this field okay. and if you look outside on the way out they're starting yeah. okay well we want it to be done right so they're okay. scheduled to finish by August 24th. Okay. Good. Well, that, that's kind of close, right? We'll take best Because the, the students under. come back and they have preseason practice. Mm -hmm. We know how that so goes, right? We know. Yeah. yeah, we know. <laughs> um, okay, so let's hope they're on schedule. <laughs> all right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, item 
5.38, may I have a motion to approve the change order number 010 from Dobital Construction for work at Bell Middle School? I move item 5.38. May I have a second? Second. Any questions? No, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Item 5.39, may I have a motion to um, declare the attached list of items no longer necessary? Um, and declared to be surplus property I as, as uh, stated on the agenda and the attached list of items. I move the item 5.39, uh, surplus property. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, we have a motion on item 5.0, which is a generous gift from the Roaring Brook PTA in the amount of um, $2,200 to be used towards renovation of the Butterfly Garden Pathway and another gift of $940 to be used towards the purchase of um, AV equipment to be used in the Roaring Brook Cafeteria for presentations, videos, and communications, and um, authorizing the board president to execute. I have the 5.4. I second 5.4. 4-0. 4-0. Um, thank you very much to the Roaring Brook PTA yes. for this yes, very thank you. generous gift. Um, any other questions or comments? Four zero. Four zero. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, we have a motion on item uh, 5.41 to accept a monetary gift, another generous gift from the Greeley PTA in the amount of $4,292 to be used towards the purchase of an outdoor ta outdoor table and chairs for the outdoor meeting common space for students and faculty on the new patio outside of the Greeley Guidance Office. I may have a motion and a second. I will move 5.41. I will second. Um, and again, thank you to the Greeley PTA for a very generous gift. Um, who's here from Greeley? Thank you very much. Um, happy we got this on the agenda. Uh -huh. Okay. Any any questions? No, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, we have a motion on item 5.42 to approve the terms of a supplemental memorandum of agreement with um, the CCT bargaining unit regarding certain fellowships as presented to the board. I move item 5.42. May I have a second? I'll second 5.42. Okay, all in favor? Wait, can I oh. just say something? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I should ask I, if there are any questions. No, I didn't. Um, I hadn't planned to say something, but then I rethought about it. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to explain um, our fellowships. So we have four that I'm asking you to consider approving that the um, CTT has agreed to. Um, t the first two are two-year fellowships. And um, uh, the first of two aligns with our strategic planning in that we have a cohort of, of teachers that will be working on social-emotional learning across the district and specifically how to leverage um, student voice in our uh, in our program so uh, our second is our active learning leadership team ALF and that will be um, chaired by Adam and Josh and they'll be looking at our spaces and um, active uh, learning within those places throughout the district um, our third fellowship actually will start in February and this is, um, Adam will be leading this fellowship and it's called the Graduate Positioning System. And this is, we'll be looking at curricular alignment, K through 12, and assessment. And then our fourth um, fellowship opportunity is a one-year fellowship, which is a little bit of a departure from our process. And um, next year, all of our reading teachers will become Wilson Level 1 certified. Um, but we have different pathways for that to happen. Um, so a fellowship is one of those pathways, um, but in addition, we have a three-year program for minimally our K-8 special teachers to also become Wilson Level 1 certified, so they'll be able to take advantage of this next year if they choose to do so as well. So um, I just wanted to mention those four fellowships. Mary mm -hmm. and Adam have been working together with Josh and with Jamie in her new role to help uh, uh, craft what these would look like moving forward, so we'll have our applications out tomorrow. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Um, thank you, um, Adam and Josh, wherever you are. Oh, my gosh, and Heidi. And Heidi, and Heidi. And Heidi. Yes, too. I apologize. Yes, Jeez. and Heidi. Um, yeah, thank you, and as usual, to all of We're the administrators excited. for really working. 
so well together. Mm -hmm. Much appreciated. Um, any other questions? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, move on to item 5.43. May I have a motion to approve um, to approve Sheila Silverman to a position of secondary AP at Horace Greeley High School on a I contractual move. basis. I move 4.3. May I have a second? A second. All in, um, any questions? Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, item 5.44, may I have a motion to ratify the provisions of the memorandum of agreement with, um, with COSA uh, and to incorporate those provisions into the th a three-year successor agreement effective July 1 of this year, terminating July June 30 of 2021. I move item Five point four four. Um, I'll second. Okay. Any questions? Thank you comments? to the administration for negotiating this contract. Yeah, and to COSA as well. Or to to COSA also. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, item five point four five may have a motion to approve the terms of the supplemental memorandum of agreement with the Chappaqua Administrators Association. Uh, regarding a uh, summer work schedule as presented to the board. I move 5.45. I will second. Thank you to the administration and to uh, mm -hmm. Chapel Court Administrators Association. Any comments? So mm -hmm. I would just um, share that the COSA um, contract and the SMOA for the administrators uh, reshapes what summer looks like in our district. So all of our offices now will be open um, Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 3.30, rather than having um, a, a, a five-day work week with hours that differ by building. Mm -hmm. um, so we're working the same amount of time, but we're all working the same hours on the same day. Um, the custodial agreement fluctuates over the five-day period, so the buildings will be open five days a week for our camps and other uh, um, programs that occur here, but offices will be available for parents and kids to receive support Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 3.30 p.m. Um, could we send a message to the community yep, regarding to this? Because Absolutely. yes, okay, great. Okay, it makes sense to consolidate, mm -hmm. consolidate it that way, make it consistent. Um, any other comments or questions? No, may I have a motion? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. aye. Okay, move on to item 5.46, um, I have a motion to ratify the provisions of the memorandum of agreement um, uh, with the CCT uh, to be incorporated into a three-year successor agreement effective July 1, 2018, terminating on June 30, 2021. I move 5.46. I second. Any questions or comments? Thank you no. to the administration and Chapman oh, Congress. Very hard. Yes, thank yes, you very thank much. You very much. so hard. The CCT and to, to all of the bargaining units for um, working in partnership with us. Um, we value all of our staff here in the district. Mm -hmm. um, and um, thank you for, um, for all the hard work on this. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, I'd like to move to item 5.47. Um, we have a motion to accept um, the recommendation of the superintendent uh, uh, regarding an agreement as stated um, in the agenda. I move item 5.47. May I have a no. motion and no. a second? I move item 5.47. We have a second? I'll second. Okay. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. I was going to have the closing. <laughs> okay. Any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, Vicki, before we move on, can I just acknowledge, Lisa, this agenda was really <laughs> intense. <laughs> And I don't know um, how I Lisa just put together these booklets, but thank you, thank you very much. I kept turning a pages. labor <laughs> of love here, and I just want to acknowledge all of Lisa's yes. hard work to get this right for mm -hmm. us tonight. That's so an exciting conclusion. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank you, Lisa. I, I want to, um, uh, you know, since this is our last <laughs> meeting of the of the school year, I want to thank Lisa. This was her first year as our district clerk. Things have gone very smoothly. The uh, the the 
budget vote and election also went very smoothly. This, these were complicated agendas. And uh, to come into the position as also with a new superintendent yeah. and new district clerk together, um, everything went and really died. smoothly. I have to thank both of you for working together as a team with, with, that, with that particular circumstance. And I really so. owe it all to John Chow because he is the one who said Lisa is the person that we need <laughs> in that seat. So and, uh, I'm certain to get rid of Lisa. And John <laughs> gave up. John gave up Lisa. So thank you. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> also, Kasum has the answer to yeah. Jeff's question. The P E P P M. It stands for Pennsylvania Educational Purchasing Program for Microcomputers. We figured there was a Pennsylvania oh. in there somewhere, That's right? Yeah, is. but yeah. it was for California too. So I was right. a little confused. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, we're up to city. facilities. We don't. You don't have any facilities reports, do you? <laughs> I am not willing to do a facility report. <laughs> okay. <this> <laughs> okay. I move on to financials. May I have a motion on item five point. Uh, I mean, uh, seven point one and seven point two. Uh, the appropriation status report of May 2018 and the revenue status report of May 2018. We have a motion and a second. Oh, I'll move 7.1 and 7.2. Second. Okay. 7.1, 7.2. Got to finish it off. Any questions okay. or comments on these reports? No. Okay. No. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Notice of future meetings. Our next meeting will be Friday, June 22nd, um, at 8 a.m. at the Ed Center. And following that will be our first meeting of the next school year, uh, Wednesday, July 11th at 7.30 p.m. at the, the Horse Bealey <laughs> Commons, uh, which will be our reorganization meeting. May. And we'll see everybody at graduation. Well, I, I don't think that's a notice of future meeting, but there will be a graduation. <laughs> it will take place on Sunday, uh, June 17th. I unfortunately will have to miss graduation as school president. I haven't missed graduation yet, and I'm sorry to miss it, but my nephew is getting married in California. Yes, so congratulations. Yes. You should miss for that. Enjoy. Yes. And the so, silver um, you only get married twice, so. What? Maybe, too, we can acknowledge Vicki for her presidency oh. this year. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It was fun. Thank you, everyone. And Jeff for his okay. vice presidency. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. I'm going to pledge of allegiance. <laughs> you did amazingly at that pledge. Okay, it's all teamwork. So thank you, everybody. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I move we adjourn it. I'm going to say oh, it. Oh, uh, no one seconded. I, I, will, I will second. Oh. <laughs> take the, I'll take the honor of seconding. Um, okay. I'm not voting. Oh. What? We're not adjourned. We're, We're not going to adjourn. <laughs> you know, for the rest of my natural life. All right. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Meeting all is right. here by adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.